Welcome to the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, where you'll learn more about how currency production evolved over the past 150 years. If you're visiting March through August, you'll need to obtain a timed entry pass and arrive 15 minutes early to take a free tour. Feel free to listen to this presentation of the museum and its contents before or after entering through security entrance into the main lobby. Please note the museum doesn't allow the use of cell phones, cameras, or mobile devices once the tour begins. The Bureau of Engraving and Printing designs and produces many different security products for the U.S. government. Most notable is paper currency for the Federal Reserve, the central bank of the U.S. The Bureau also produces treasury securities, military commissions and certificates, invitations and admission cards, and many different types of identification cards and other special security documents for various government agencies. However, they don't produce coins. All coins are produced separately by the United States Mint. It all started in 1861, when Congress authorized the Secretary of the Treasury to issue paper currency instead of coins due to the lack of funds related to the costs of the Civil War. The paper notes were basically government IOUs, called demand notes, because they were payable on demand in coin at certain Treasury facilities. At the time, the government didn't have a facility to produce paper money, so a private firm made the demand notes in sheets of four. These sheets were then sent to the Treasury Department, where clerks signed the notes while many other workers cut the sheets and trimmed them by hand. Gradually, more work involving currency and government obligations, including engraving and printing, was moved over to the Treasury. It wasn't until 1929, when the size of the notes was reduced and portraits of presidents and dignitaries started appearing on different paper currency denominations. A committee determined that a design with portraits of U.S. presidents have a more permanent familiarity in the minds of the public than any others. The national motto, In God We Trust, first appeared on some 1935 $1 silver certificates, but wasn't adopted for use on paper money until 1957 and added on U.S. Federal Reserve notes until 1963. This motto is used on both U.S. coins and notes as required by two statutes. This use of the national motto has been challenged in court many times over the years, and has been consistently upheld by the various courts of this country, including the U.S. Supreme Court as recently as 1977. The paper currency is made from 75% cotton and 25% linen, yet it is very durable. It takes about 4,000 double folds, forwards and backwards, before a bill will tear. Despite the durability, a typical bill usually lasts only a few years, so each day, the Bureau prints over $800 million worth of paper currency. The lifespan varies by denomination based on how often the bill is used by the public. Larger bills last much longer than smaller denominations. On your screen, you'll see a list of the average lifespan for the commonly used denominations. The color of money, green, was chosen because of its high resistance to chemical and physical changes, and the color green was associated with the strong and stable credit of the government. With the growing popularity of U.S. currency and the development of photography in the mid-1800s, it was customary to print the notes in black, combined with colored tints as a deterrent to counterfeiting. The early camera reproduced images in black, so counterfeiters learned to alter the coloring of a note without disturbing the black ink. As a result, the Bureau developed a color tint that could not be erased without damaging the black coloring. On your display are two statutes that apply to currency notes. One, as shown on your screen, seeks criminal penalties against anyone who tries to counterfeit any U.S. currency notes in violation of Title 18, Section 471 of the United States Code. The other seeks criminal penalties against anyone who intentionally defaces the note, as outlined in Title 18, Section 333. Did you know that it costs money to make money? It costs approximately 8 to 9 cents to produce one paper bill today. The costs are associated with more expensive counterfeiting features and currency lifespan. Coins, despite having a much longer lifespan, are still more expensive to produce. 
The U.S. Mint loses millions of dollars making pennies and nickels. It costs one and a half cents to make every penny and six cents for each nickel. The dollar bill is loaded with numbers, letters, and watermarks to help the U.S. Treasury track printing errors and authenticate currency. If you look at a currency bill, you'll notice the various numbers and letters. If you look at the serial number, the first letters correspond to the issuing federal bank, and the last number tells how many times the serial number has run. Below the serial number in the top left, the letter represents the position of the bill on the 32-note printing plate. The number corresponds to the issuing federal bank. Do you know who is featured in the portrait for all U.S. paper currency, including the $100,000 note? On your screen, see if you can guess who is featured on the front and what is on the back of each note. This concludes our presentation of the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. Need directions to your next stop on the tour? Select the directions link for the landmark listed on the map display.